Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am an overcomer, writer, speaker, and God enthusiast. I am fueled by helping women achieve their emotional healing so that they can live the abundant life God has for them. In this podcast series, we provide faith-based inspiration to men from emotional hurt, along with tools and tips for emotional wellness. In your journey, as you apply these tools and tips, you will begin to live the transformed life that you always desired. In fact, you will possess a new you. Glad to have you with us. We are going to do something very special for the remainder of the podcast series. I think by now, you know that I love doing repeats. By repeating information, we can apply and reapply principles that foster change. Since I love repeats, we have put together great highlights from the season. In this season, I have shared a lot about myself and what I learned on my journey and continually learning. I also invited friends along to provide additional insights. As we move forward, we begin our latest segment with learning more about me as I was interviewed by a local internet radio station. This segment comes directly from podcast number 37, A New You, episode one, Getting to Know an Overcomer. As you listen, I want to inspire you once more as to why we do what we do. We care about you and want to remind you that you are not alone in your journeys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show again, Ms. Baker. I appreciate you stopping through, giving us this time, this knowledge, this education, because a lot of people fail to realize that, and we'll just get right into it, that domestic violence is more than just one form. So before we get started, can you kind of give us a backstory of what it is that you're representing? Well, I am representing long-term transformation. Love it. Yes. We've all, I feel like, have experienced some type of emotional hurt. It Mm -hmm. may have been as high as domestic violence, and it may just be just dealing with everyday relationships. And so what we try to do is focus on how do we have healthy habits or healthy understanding of our emotions that so it doesn't destroy us. Right. And how to expose those things that we normally stuff. Right. And decide that, oh, I ain't going to deal with this right now. I'm just mm-hmm. going to do me. Mm-hmm. And I think for women, we do that so much because there's a lot going on in the world, especially with us being parents, being mm-hmm. mothers, being workers, being wives, um, careers, all those things. It's so easy for us to deny ourselves right. and say, we'll deal with this later. Okay. And so for me, I did come from an abusive background, okay. uh, physically abusive and everything else you can imagine. And it was from a caregiver. That's usually what happens. You, they bring you in the home and you're like, oh, I'm going to trust you. Uh, no. And the outcome wow. of that is, you know, it's amazing what abuse does internally. Right. And again, because mentally as well, and because of not trying to address those issues right away, mm-hmm. you go and you live and right. you live you and you live. Women. Right. And, but then at some point it's going to have a fall. It's going to come out. And I experienced that in my twenties. I just felt like I just lost my mind. Right. And it was because I never dealt with the things that happened to me. I never took time to say, Kimari, what happened to you wasn't right. Right. And it's something that you don't have to keep holding on to. And so I went through a period where God was like, no, it's time to deal with what happened. Gotcha. And in that was my healing journey. And it came in different forms, different shapes. God brought different people to me, different went to therapy and I did all of those things. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I'm not the only one. How right. can I give back? How can my story help heal and encourage people? Right. And again, 
Emotional healing doesn't have to come from domestic violence. It sure. doesn't have to come from the big things. Right, right. And so what we do as a nonprofit organization, we've been starting off small. We were trying to say, hey, you know what? We're human. Right. We got issues. Right. I have a tendency. I want to talk to you today. I'm shutting down. <laughs> I don't want to deal with you today. And we have right. our self-doubt. And even That's as true. women, worthiness, yes. we don't know that we're worthy. Yeah, we don't know our worth. Yeah. And so we put ourselves in relationships that's more toxic, mm-hmm. that's more destructive. Just to be in one. Yeah, exactly. And because by nature, we were designed to be loved. Yeah. And that's what we want. Yes. And we try to find it in crazy ways. Yeah. And it's not something that God wants for us. Yes. And so for me, I'm a Jesus lover. I love my God. Already. G-O-D yeah. all day. Yeah. And one of the things that I've learned in my journey is because of the suffering, it's so easy to blame God. He's at fault for everything. Because if he was as big as he is, he wouldn't should... let that happen. Exactly. To me. Right. And so we go through this period as well of not knowing that he's with us. And so what we try to do is kind of bring that back to a safe place and allow us to be exposed to not necessarily what we heard the preacher say on Sunday Mm -hmm. that kind of got a little convoluted. Right. But to go back to a simple place, starting with I was created in God's image. He loves me. He's always been with me. Now, what does that look like in my everyday life? Right. And so that's what we try to do. And right now we're focused on our podcast series because oh nice yes nice. because congratulations yes because y'all don't know me <laughs> right not yet <laughs> right and so the podcast is a great way to get my story out to allow other people to come in as well mm-hmm. because like I said before we interview life coaches social workers yes. therapists and we try to take a deeper dive to healing those wounds That's instead true. of stuffing it mm-hmm. instead of denying it. Say, okay, what can I do that won't kill me? (laughs) Right, right. Now, it's funny that you say that because I'm going to go a little bit back when you said in the statement because what you said was very interesting and it caught my eye on many different... And before we get to these questions, I have this question because you said your abuse was from a caregiver. Yes. When you say caregiver, can you elaborate? Um, It was someone in my home that was considered to be... Because the person is still alive, so you don't want to... Okay, we're not going to use names. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was a a relationship that my mother had and, you know, came into the home and, you know, wanted to be the parent, but decided that they wanted to do other things. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. And I know I have friends where it wasn't necessarily a family in that context, but family members or family friends. Right. And for me, I was very fortunate where... I didn't have to stay in that environment long term. Eventually, the person did leave. Gotcha. And so I was very fortunate, yes, that I didn't have to go back through and have to be reminded every day. So, Mm -hmm. again, even though it was suffering and destructive, Mm -hmm. uh, God still provided light. Right. Now, when you're going through this and you're in the midst of it, and I'm not trying to take you Mm -hmm. back to that place, but some people do not understand that they are in that place. Because some people think that is a natural thing. You know, this person doing this, well, this is their way of showing that they love me. Yeah, yeah, I had that moment. How did you cope with that in the midst of going through it before you got out? Yeah, well, I would say in the middle of it, I was confused because you you define what... Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. How old were you? Uh, seven. Oh, you were a baby. Yeah, I was seven. Yep. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, and so you you try to rationalize and you try to make sense of it, of course, mm-hmm. and then you put in this category of, well, uh, this is what love is, mm-hmm. because that's the, because that's, that's what you think, yeah, that's, that's what, what you're getting, that's what so the, that's what you feel like yeah. you. Ah, oh, yeah. got, yeah. got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, is that yeah. that's what I was going to say. It's seven. That's, that's a this, child yeah, yeah, it's like they're programming you to say yeah. this is what it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so it takes time to realize. And and I think what's key is having safe people in your environment that you can go to and talk to kind of unravel that way of thinking. I'm sorry. Pull your mic a little bit closer. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it. One of the things that we talk about a lot in the nonprofit is having support and finding safe people yes. and being able to talk to someone who is professional, who can help work through those emotions, those feelings and that understanding to kind of correct that way of thinking. Right. So that you don't come to my place in my 20s where you have a complete emotional breakdown. Mm, OK, so that's my next question. Yeah. When did you get to because you said that you weren't in it long. There's a lot of people that I even know now that. 
been in it and they are complacent with it. You get what I'm saying? To where they're coming up to where it's like an embarrassment to say. How did you end up saying, okay, let me speak on this? Well, ironically, I've always been some type of creative person. Yes, I can see that. Yes. <laughs> and uh, for me, it came out in my creativity. I was in school and I wrote an article. I wrote a school paper. Oh, nice. And uh, my teacher was like, hold up. You too young to be talking about this. What's going on? And so that's how it was exposed uh, for me. Okay. And, okay. and one of the things that we do talk about in the podcast series is the importance of being able to journal. And to be able to process your emotions and feelings and to be able to get more in tune with it in a safe place, in a safe way. And then within that journaling and you're able to identify what's really going on, then you're able to talk to people and and make sense. Right. It's not all jumbled. Right. Yeah. And so for me, my artistic side brought it out. And I know other individuals who will do painting or, right. you know, spoken like word. music, because that's what I did. Right. Music. music, things of that nature that kind okay. of, you, you know, frees that up a little bit. Highlight from podcast number 38, A New You, episode two, Getting to Know an Overcomer, part two. We have listeners that are way in a deep ocean. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we make it seem like, oh, we just got over it overnight. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I want them to know that like even the process of me in the entertainment business, yeah. I let them know, hey, I've lived in my car. Right. I've lived out my trunk. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and the in-between is what I'm asking yeah. as far as what is that in-between. Yeah. And I appreciate that question because course, what course. you bring to the table is you have to do the work. Gotcha. Gotcha. At the end of the day, healing is not, I wake up tomorrow because I want to be different and it's done. Right. It just doesn't work that way. I right. wish it did. Yeah. It'll be a lot easier. And I wish I can say, you know, I prayed for a whole week. <laughs> and this week I prayed so hard and the Lord heard me and I'm healed. Amen. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't work that way it requires investment it requires i had a bad day but you know what tomorrow i'm getting up i'm going to do something different i'm going to talk to different people i'm going to find new relationships i'm going to find this support group i'm going to find this organization i'm going to find this person who believes in me i'm going to keep going because god still has a plan for my life and i want that plan okay okay that's what i wanted to know because the simplicity of it is the fact that it happens and we got to deal with it. But there, there's that deepness that we're trying to figure sure. out. How do we get there? Because a lot of the questions that are coming to me are like, well, I went through this and this person mm-hmm. and I went through this and that person and this person did. And I didn't. And I, you know what I mean? And then yeah. when you want to talk about it, well, I don't want to talk about it. Right. OK, there's yeah. a big elephant on that wall and yeah. you see it, but nobody yeah. wants to acknowledge it. You have to acknowledge that elephant yeah. in order to get to the zoo, you yeah. know, so. That's what I'm like, uh, how do and you within with that? that? So I'm going to highlight my timeline, right? Gotcha. I said from seven to nine, seven is when they start. I was, like I said, I was fortunate enough. It didn't last for decades. Gotcha. Two years. Boom. That is, that's right. The lesson. Seven. Nine. Finished. Right. I had my breakdown in my twenties. Yeah. That was a big gap. Okay. Seven twenties. I had my first major therapy. Let's work through all this stuff because you're doing some crazy stuff in your life in my thirties. Mm, so you did go to that stage of this ain't what I'm supposed to do, but I'm just doing it just to be doing it. Yeah. Okay. That's what I want to know. Yeah. So you didn't do anything. It just, you know, prayed and you got better or did you go I did through the work? Right. But even in the midst yeah. of the doing the work, you just yeah. answered my next question. You did have those episodes. Cause like for me, I just worked a holic and I just ignored everything. And I just, you know, I dated people, but I didn't sleep around because that wasn't my thing. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But I'll talk to everybody. Right. You know, you want to talk, you want to go eat, you want to, you get what I'm saying? It was just that attention. Right. I wanted that attention. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm like trying to figure out, is there something that you did to cope with it until that breakdown at 20? Was there something that in between is what I'm asking that you either ignored it or you either covered it up? You know what I'm sure. saying? That's what I'm asking. And of course, uh, from that seven to 20, I lived a double life, if you want to call it as such. Whereas because I'm an achiever, I spent my time being an achiever. Okay. And so outwardly, I looked great. Gotcha. Right. But inwardly, because again, I refer to sometimes trauma lives with you. Yeah. 
And so my body was like, hey, hourly, you look great. <laughs> As but we your do. mind is a hot mess. Yeah, I have them moments now. <laughs> right. And so my, my body was like, hey, no, you need to do something different. Right. And so that was my wake up call. Okay. Right. Okay. And then even in that period of 20s, because uh, the understanding at that time, and, and sometimes we still have that stigmatism, right. is I ain't going to no therapist. <laughs> And I've seen, yes, and I've seen, that's a lot of us. Yes, yes, and, exactly. And I've seen so and so, and they mo crazy. I got and this. <laughs> like, at least I can have a conversation with you. Right. It seems like you get crazy. At least I got a job. Right. At least I ain't I can up Right. I want to shoot up everybody. And so it took me a period from my twenties to my thirties to say, you need to get professional counseling, and it is okay. Wow. Right. Because I just went on medication. Right. Yeah. Because well, that was that. still a level of coping and trying to understand yes. what's going on and try to do it in a way that's polite. Right. So there's right. No, no stigmatism. Right. But again, going back to your initial question of all those individuals who decide to put their comfort in all those other things. Right. That period, I'm still suffering. Mm, okay. Right. Okay. I, I, I'm still hurting. I've only masked the the pain okay. i've only numbed it yeah i'm still not, not living a full life gotcha right gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha. so yes you're right time time is in there and what's important is the determination that i'm not gonna follow mm. these taboos or these ethos of our culture right. of our society who tell me it's wrong to go get help Ooh, she hit it right there and i will tell you this she hit it right there millennials figured it out yeah. They go get help more than we do. They really do. They yeah. really do. Yeah. They really do. I have to yeah. give it to them. But yeah. they got a lot more issues than we do, too. Right. Because they didn't learn resilience. Right. right. And they we don't have how, any filters. Right. We learn a little bit more resilience and, re, you know, more so, structure. Yeah. But but at least in their mind, they understand, OK, I'm yeah. find me a little Facebook group. You know, yeah. I'm going to have a little, you know, I'm yeah, going to access is much easier. Yes. So I must. Say. And and within that, that's who our group or individuals we're trying to reach are individuals who have that stigmatism mm-hmm. that it's not OK. Oh, I love it. Thank you for listening to the interview that Keisha Simone of DIW Radio had with me. Next week, we'll highlight some tools and tips of the things that were shared during the interview. Join us next week.